Okay, we're going to have a look at a few topographic mapping skills today. Um, these are a range of skills that you're going to use in junior geography and really the whole way up to senior geography if you, get, if you are, uh, keep it as an elective. As an overview, some of the skills that we're going to be looking at are area of grid reference, direction and bearing, height, flow of rivers and aspect. So really, for a lot of these mapping skills, we're going to be using a topographic map. And when we're looking at a topographic map, we're looking at the topography uh, or height and uh, shape of the landscape. And in order to get that, we need to have these lines all over the uh, map. We can see here. And these lines here with numbers on them are contour lines. Contour lines. Contour lines show us height. Um, so here, in, down on the map here, the contour interval is 50 metres, which tells us that these lines will appear every time a, uh, a height of uh, over 50 metres is reached. So we can see here, any location on this line here is 250 metres, on this line is 300 metres, on this line 350, 400 and so on. Um, what we can then do with contour lines is start to uh, work out the height and uh, estimated height of locations anywhere on our topographic map. Okay, one of the first skills that we're going to be looking at is direction and bearing. Uh, you can see here I've got a little compass down here and what a student will need to be able to do is to identify uh, direction and bearing of a location to a location or from a location to a location. Uh, so what we need to do is just write in our points. So we've got north, east, south and west. The student will also need to be able to go through and name those other points around the compass. Uh, so I'll write in the I'll write in just the uh, ones at the 45, but I won't do the others. So we'd have north going round clockwise, north, northeast, then northeast, east, northeast. Uh, east, southeast, southeast, south, southeast, uh, south, southwest, southwest, west, southwest, then west, northwest, north, west, and then north, uh, northwest. So let's have a look at some applications of this. The sort sort of question that a student might get asked would be to look at the direction. Uh, of Mount Erin to, uh, we'll say to Boringer. So of Mount Erin to Boringer, and what I would suggest a student would do, uh, we're looking at the direction of Mount Erin to Boringer, we start at start at Mount Erin and we're looking at to go to Boringer, drawing the drawing the arrow. Here's our north, our east, our south, and that there is southeast. So that would be the direction that we're travelling. The other part of this skill of direction and bearing is bearing. Uh, so I'll just I'll rub out I'll rub out that and when we're looking at bearing we're looking at the uh, numerical degree value attached to it it's read exactly the same way uh, except instead of the letters we're using the numerical so north is 0 degrees east is 90 degrees South is 180 degrees, and west, I'm not going to be able to fit that on there, is 270 degrees. It's written exactly the same way, um, and the type of question that a student would be uh, given is the same type of question. So if we have a look at Mount Erin to Boringer again, what I would suggest we do is put that cross on, we draw that down. Uh, we can see here this is 90 degrees, this is... 180 degrees. So to Boringer there, uh, it would be best to, if a protractor was used there, but 
as an estimation, I think we can estimate that that there is somewhere in around uh, 135 degrees. Okay, the next school that we'll look at is height. For some reason there's a red line on my map, I can't get rid of it, so it's there. When we're looking at height, we use the contour lines that we talked about at the start. The contour lines tell us height, the height of the value. Uh, now, the hard thing here is uh, working out estimated height. We'll start, with the, we'll start with some simple versions and then sort of look at some of the harder ones. If we have a look here at location D, Location D is right on the contour line of 250 metres. It therefore makes it 250 metres. The harder uh, or the more complicated uh, applications are where a point exists in between a line, and that's where uh, a student will have to estimate its height. Let's take the example here of... Uh, let's take the example of E. Okay. Now, E is in between the 200 and the 250 metre contour lines. So it means that it, it, its height lies somewhere in between the two. Now, we can't say that it's 200 metres because if it was 200 metres, it would be on that line. Uh, likewise, we can't say it's 250 metres because if it was 250 metres it would also be on that line. So the correct notation here would be that it is between 201 to 249 metres and approximately, uh, and we can, I would suggest you, you make an estimated guess here. For me it looks like it's lying slightly closer to the 200 line so I would approximate that at about 220 metres. Now, I would suggest for students to now have a look and uh, do some heights of Mount Erin and Point H. Pause it here so you can have work those out. Okay, welcome back. Let's have a quick look at those uh, of Mount Erin and H. We'll do Mount Erin to start with. Mount Erin. Uh, Mount Erin is lying slightly above that, or it's lying above that 400 uh, line. So clearly we know that Mount Erin can't be 400 metres, otherwise the 400 line would go through Mount Erin. Um, sorry, there it is. Likewise, it can't be above 450 because if it was, there would be a 450 line. So it has to lie somewhere between 401 and 440 and 449 metres. Um, and then we estimate it at, look, I think at 400, uh, 425 metres, 422, 425. It doesn't really matter what you put it down as. Let's get it, do that properly. Let's say 425 metres would be correct. Uh, distance is a skill that uh, students will have to be able to do. Um, it's going to be hard to show the application of distance on this map, um, but a student might be asked to look at the distance from the uh, from High Town here uh, to perhaps Steel Town here. What a student might do there is use a ruler along that straight line and rule the distance here, and then using this scale here of one centimetre equals 500 metres, I work out the distance. So for example, if that turned out to be uh, 10 centimetres, well, we work out that if it's one centimetre equals 500 metres, then uh, we, can, we can do the formula there. Now, the application gets harder um, if there's a curved road. So if the question was to ask, say, um, from Mount Erin through to High Town, a student would have to get a piece of string and put that string on that curved road um, to work out. But then they would do the same calculations. The same applies for when students look at rivers um, or other uh, 
other object, other features that uh, aren't linear or straight. Okay, one of the last skills that we're going to look at is the flow of rivers, um, or in this case, I've got a lava flow. This is from Etna. It's using the same, it's using contour lines again, um, and we can see there's lava flows. What a student will have to do here is think uh, realistically, and I say this to all my students. In geography, we're looking at real life uh, examples, so you should always think, you know, does this hold up in the real world? Okay, what a student will have to do is be aware that uh, rivers, or in this case lava, is going to flow uh, from a high point to a low point. So it's going to flow downhill. A student will have to just identify where the highest point is, where the low point is, and then they'll be able to say uh, at what the direction is. So in this example here, if we were to say, get a question asking us from the top of the cable car, which is here, to the bottom of the map, around here, what's the direction of the flow? Well, we can see here that 2,250 is the high point, so 1,000 is the low point. Clearly it's flowing this direction, uh, so it would be south. I think it's just important to always just be aware that we're looking at a real location, so your answer's got to fit uh, in the real world. Okay, that's a lot. This is the last of the skills that we're going to be looking at. I did say at the start we'd be looking at area and grid reference. However, I've got another video on that that you can look at. Um, an aspect I'll deal with in a later video as well. Okay, hopefully this has been helpful for you and it's uh, you know tweaked your memory or uh, sort of got you used to some of those skills. Thanks.